The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hi, my name is Leo Connors, and welcome to The Ring and All Other Sports. Tonight, I got a very special guest, making his, like, ninth appearance on the show, Proving Grounds, Todd Graham. Todd. Mr. Steve Martin. Yes, I make Mr. that joke Steve every Martin. time. Yes, I don't do. care. But it's uh, nice to have you on again. Uh, you got nice a to be big had. show coming up on uh, Saturday, October 21st. August 21st. It's what right did I say, there. September? You said October. You just said two wrong months. Wow. It's right here. Uh, Saturday, there August 21st right. in Peabody. But, I want to open up with something first. Um, the professional wrestling world lost a, a bunch of uh, legends in the past few weeks. Uh, the first one was Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff, a few weeks ago. Um, he, Paul was, Mr. Wonderful was instrumental in the first two WrestleManias. Any it's, memories of Mr. You know, I, you know, as far, I mean, for as, long as, as, for as long as wrestling has been wrestling, it's like, okay, there's Mr. Wonderful. And I remember him from Pretty Wonderful with Roma. Right. And I remember him from Mania One. I wasn't alive then, right? But you know, uh, I I, you know, I remember seeing him all through the '90s. But it's like after there was a match that happened, he took a pile driver, and he was just he got stretchered out, and that was like the last you really heard of him. It was like all you ever heard was he was kind of like in ailing health, right? So you know, it's it's a tragedy, but I, I'm I'm sure his family is t is is happy not having to see him suffer all the time yes, anymore yes. so well you saw the video that his son had put out i don't know if you had when he i was, don't think i did yeah i mean it was sad a lot of it was controversy a lot of people gave him crap for it but i look at it this way he said he did it so people would see what happened you know what i mean that, that people could see and, and and send their prayers to him nobody knew what was going on with mr wonderful at the time and mm. you know that was his son's way of coping with it and I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? Listen, you know, I have a lot of friends, uh, and it's sad because, I mean, I'm only, in, I'm in my mid-30s, and I already have a lot of friends that grew up with me that are no longer here, and I have all this old footage, and it's right. like, all right, well, you know, I always make sure if I ever release anything to clear it with their families and everything, but it's just like, I have, I have too many hours of footage of dead friends. It's very weird. We'll see you in New York. I know you just lost some friends. We, Why yeah. don't you mention them? We'll go back to the... To yeah, the so after. I mean, you know, when you talk about... Um, when you talk about people that were, uh, you know, important to me, um, my, my friend Nicole just passed away from... Uh, she had brain cancer. She was a part of the, the... She was a part of when we were in the backyard a long time. I was really close with uh, Ryan Andrews. Right. And, um, and Christian Sane. Um, Chris Pratt, who was... Uh, believe it or not, he was, you know... He was one of those guys that wrestled around here in this area, um, you know, most notably with WAW. Right. And I know how some of the viewers are going to feel about WAW, right. but you got to understand that there's, you've heard the term, the diamond in the rough. Like every once, like if, if you reach into a bag of hay, you will eventually find a needle. And he was one of those needles. He was just one of those guys that was, that was so good. And a lot of people got better because of him. And he never branched out. Yeah. You know, he never, and every time I saw him, every time I saw him, I said, hey man, you know, you want to come down? We're still doing TV tapings. And I think it was at Salisbury at the time. And I'm like, you can come down anytime you want. Let's rock and roll. And he was always happy that I would ask, but he never took me up on it. And, right. and uh, you know, he got married, he had a baby. Uh, he had a minor surgery to help remove, I believe it was some kind of uh, cancer cells that were forming again yeah. in him. And, uh, Got a blood clot, and that was it. So, so yeah, for for me, it, you know, I, like I said, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that we were super close, but right. he was always good to me, and it sucks that he's not here. Right. Well, I'm sorry for your loss. And, and the, anybody that would put down WAW right now when someone lost their life, life would be a real idiot. I'm sorry, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Um, I've never, I've never seen eye to eye with that promotion. But we do have a question from Dan from WAW later. Oh yes, so, of course. All right, so um. So there was a few other pe passings. Um, I told you off here when I was a kid, masked wrestlers. I was a magazine guy. Kid, yeah. You know, and. Oh, I know. I, I went to your yard sale. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You've seen all of them. Yeah. I mean, and that wasn't even all of them. No, it of was course a not. whole bunch. Just of the ones you were getting rid of. Yes. But um, 
It was it was said Jody Hamilton, the assassin, has passed away. Um, one of the one of the greatest heel re- masked wrestlers of all time. Yeah, mostly down south. You know, I have. I think I I think I only ever saw him because I didn't. I never went that far back. Right. He's like I to, to, to put over Dallas McCarthy. I never went that far back in my in my research. So I was right. like I knew of him, and I think I think I think he came around in WCW like in the early 90s like 93 94 i think he was managing somebody around he there. was because he was also running the power plant at the same time for wcw wasn't so. he managing paul orndorff yes okay so yes. that's okay yep so that's what i remember i remember i didn't even think of that so slipping like a metal it almost looked like a metal coin up under the mask and giving somebody a head button just like oh it's brilliant he was the best the best angle i ever seen him and he was pretending he was el santo from uh, mexico <laughs> in florida giving dusty Rhodes an award and he just you know obviously beat him down it was an awesome angle you could catch it on youtube guys it's really good beating the stuffing out of dusty i'm nick patrick's dad yes exactly yeah that's it yeah yeah it's guys that watch wcw in the nitro days nick patrick the referee that was his dad um also, Memphis promoter, manager, legend, Burt Prentice passed away. Mm. Uh, he also used to manage in the AWA as Christopher Love. I don't know if you remember that at all. I was never much of an AWA fan, but, but I believe uh, it. But uh, he put on Jerry Lawler's 50th anniversary show, which was last year or the year before. I think it was before the pandemic. And uh, so rest in peace to those guys. And last but not least, beautiful Bobby Eaton, p- possibly... One of the smoothest, well, definitely one of the smoothest wrestlers in the ring of all time. And they say one of the nicest guys ever. Everybody I've ever heard talk about Bobby. And I've seen a lot of Bobby's work. You know, we're both fans of Cornette. Yeah. So, you know, damn well, we hear a lot about the Midnight Express. And Bobby, I, I, I read this somewhere, so I apologize for who I'm misquoting here. But... Bobby Eaton was regarded by his peers as one of the best wrestlers to ever get into a ring, and he is still one of the most criminally underrated wrestlers that there ever was. No, I wouldn't be surprised if Ric Flair said that. I'm saying, not friends with Ric Flair on Facebook. No, but that's, Ric Flair, though, uh, has said that he loved, like, there was two times they wanted him to wrestle on TV. Everyone, everyone knows about the George Salt thing. How he asked to work with George Salt. Right. But he asked to work with Bobby Eaton also. Yeah. And wanted to not let, like, not go over Bobby. He wanted to do a DQ. They literally had to convince Rick, like, Rick, you know, we all, we all love Bobby. You can't keep but you you're can't let him you're the world win. champion, you know? Well, how do you think you sell tickets? You got to right. make the champion look beatable. Oh, absolutely. And beautiful Bobby did that. One half of the Midnight Express. So, uh, rest in peace, guys. Todd, let's oh. try this again. <laughs> Saturday, August 21st at 7 p.m., Proving Ground presents Ultimate Alliance, live from the Peabody Black Box. Have you seen pictures of this place? No, I have not. All right, so there are people who have purchased tickets, and and hopefully there are people out there who haven't purchased tickets yet uh, that have never seen a wrestling show in a facility like this. All right. All right. So first of all, if like when you walk in, um, we haven't set up the lights and anything yet, but it's like when you walk in, it's like this empty performance space. You know what I mean? Yep. Like a lot of people hear Black Box and they might be familiar with Sully Banger's promotion, Wrestle Party, yes. which runs out of the AS220 in Providence, which is also referred to as the Black Box. However, not a lot of people know that Black Box is a universal term meaning I mean, it's most commonly used for improv. Okay. So, like, improv troops will have black box theaters. Right. A lot of the times back in the day when you were an independent movie promoter and you wanted to... um, and you wanted to show your movie to people, they called it four walling, where you just rent a space and play the movie basically on the wall. Right. And it's, it's, our place is, it's like a movie theater. You walk in, there's a huge movie screen on the wall, which our videos will be playing on. Right. There's a professional lighting rig, not unlike this one, uh, in this studio uh, that can be set to be, you know, we're going to you know, spotlights on the ring. We're going to have, we're going to try and make a, a decent light show that also is conducive to anybody that might have, you know, auditory issues. Right. Like we don't want to, we don't want to be like, all right, here we go. Show may cause seizure. No, but you know, we're going to, we're, you know, we have the ability to do so many things right. and professional sound and everything. It's not, the, it's not the usual. Yeah. We bought a PA, we put it on two sticks and set it up to 10. 
right. it's fine. <laughs> you know, it's like it's the lawnmower going off and the music. No, it's a really, really nice facility. Nice. And uh, it's air conditioned. There's a cash bar. And a lot of people, see, you don't, you don't often see this on the poster. And I know yeah. we didn't write it on the poster, but the seats are comfy. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I've been to the garden. God damn it. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like this. Yeah. I believe it was a Brunswick bowling chair. Uh, it was not very comfortable. But right. no, it's, uh, you know, it's like the, it's the little things. And there's so many little things. And we had three different types of seats. We had the general admission. Right. There's only going to be, you know, because of the size of the space, there's only going to be like three or four rows. So every right. seat's going to be a good one. But we also gave people the opportunity if they wanted to sit up front, they could. And for the first time ever, because we've never had this kind of a thing, there's a catwalk area. Right. That you want to talk about the best seat in the house. Right. Now, a lot of people will argue that. A lot yeah. of people will argue, hey, best seat in the house is right up on the ring, getting sweat on. But when I was a kid going to these wrestling shows, I always wanted those loge seats. Right. Because they, you know, they weren't so far that they were the balcony. Is like, I think that ant is Triple H. No, it's... You get a nice overlook of everything. You can see everything. You can see the screen. You can see the, the wrestlers. You can see the performance. You can see everything. Right. And you get your own private server. So, I saw that. So I wrote all that down. If you like the booze hall, yeah. they'll bring it to you all night long. Now, it's not free, right. but they'll bring it to you so yeah. you don't have to get up from your seat. That's pretty cool. And uh, and we also offered like different amenities uh, for the different tickets and whatnot. Yeah, so. I seen that you did like some... Uh, Best seat in the house overlooking the entire venue. That's the VIP premium. Yes, seating. yes. Uh, private server for drinks, cash, my signed Ultimate Alliance poster. Yes, so this That's post, pretty cool. This too. poster in an 11 by 17 size signed by everybody on the poster and most likely other people on the show right, as well right. on the back, you know. Yeah. But uh, so there's that. There's the exclusive trading card. The exclusive trading card. Uh, artwork done by uh, Dave Cole. Yes. For anybody curious. And the uh, the exclusive action figure. The 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 Dick Lane UV blue for for all you people with UV lighting, um, you can make Dick glow in the dark. And if I've said anything a hundred times because it makes me laugh, you know, yeah, a glowing Dick will draw people. So so we did that, and uh, <clears throat> and so far, uh, if I'm not mistaken, as of right now, it could be different because when does the when do these shows usually go up? About go a week. Mondays. About a week. Yeah, so, maybe the end of this week or by Monday for sure. Oh, so, so we, it'll definitely be out before your show. Okay, so but but either way, uh, who knows? By the time this airs, those VIP tickets might right. be uh, you know completely sold out. We only had two left as yeah. of this morning. So so yeah, um, you know, very limited seating. It's a very small place, but uh, it's going good so far. Nice. And you, you know how wrestling shows are. Yeah. E everyone's going to buy their ticket last second. Yep, I would advise not because. Like I said, it's very limited. You there's there's very few tickets, uh, you know, left at this point. So it's like get on it, get your tickets immediately, and uh, we'll see you on August twenty first. Excellent, excellent. Now, in two days, you're doing you're streaming a show. Well, I mean, it'll be three days ago by the time this comes out. Maybe we can maybe we can do spoilers on this. Yeah, <laughs> um, the Dirty City Smash Tag Team Championship Tournament Night One. Yes, yes. So this, so Ultimate Alliance, you're going to see the semifinals and the finals of the tag team tournament. Nice. But um, we wanted to make sure that we, on our first night back, we were presenting a little bit of everything. Right. So we've got some debuts. We've got, um, there's going to be a Proving Ground Championship match. We didn't want to be like, all right, here's seven tag team matches on our, right. on our first night back. So we decided we were going to do another show. And since we had a partnership with uh, Reunion Wrestling, which is run by the Mac Attack, okay. uh, Monster Mac and Trainee yep. Number One, who you should absolutely have on the I'd show. Love to have them. I've never even met them, so maybe um, you can do the introduction for oh, me, Todd. Oh, for sure. All right. They they are like once we started running those private taping shows, um, they got in touch with me, and you know we've been friends for a while, and and they were doing this thing, and you know obviously hey to offset costs, why don't we just split it? So we right. split a couple of tapings, and that's the taping that's going to air. This coming Wednesday. Well, all right. Well, depending. All right. This is being filmed on Monday. Yes. So this coming two days from now is another live and for free stream. Yep. Um, of our shows. And it's the last show we filmed in. Uh, in We filmed it in Fall River, the okay. Dirt City. And we filmed it, um, you know, as, as coined by our Dirt City murder crew and heavyweight champion, Mike Montero. Um, 
so we did that and we decided to do the first round of the tournament. And uh, by the time this goes out, this will be old news. So I'll just rattle off all the teams that are yeah, in the tournament. Because I don't know who they are. Um, you know, as of this morning, we released, it's going to be the Middlesex Express, Team Espana, now going by their nickname, the Hispanic Mechanics. Okay. Um, the Young Guns, which was originally supposed to be Jamie Tucker and Harry Brooks. Yeah. But unfortunately, Harry Brooks uh, suffered a serious injury to his hands. Sorry to hear that. And he will be, uh, you know, it's the perils of working in a wood shop. Ooh, yeah. So you can already imagine what I'm talking about. Yeah. He'll be being replaced by uh, other Young Gun member, uh, AJP. So nice. AJP and Jamie Tucker. And um, Detox, it was originally supposed to be Detox, right. which is Ricky Medeiros and Jason Devine. All right, you can rewind this now because I can go, Jason Devine experienced a serious injury to his hand. And he could, it was a bad day for hands wow. when I booked this card. Right. Yeah, so he broke his hand and needed surgery. Uh, so it'll be Mike Montero and Ricky Medeiros. Wow. Teaming up to represent the Dirt City Murder Crew. Uh, and the other four teams that we haven't, uh, that as of this morning, we right. haven't updated, but it doesn't matter now. Um, Bob and Tim, Tough Guy Incorporated. Yep, yep. The Mac Attack, Monster Mac and Trainee, number one. Uh, this is the part where I wish I had notes. Ah, the Hoods, they're yes, on the poster. They're on the poster, yeah. The uh, Hoods, uh, Chris Pyro, and Davey Cash, and uh, the return of the Heavy Headers. Oh, nice. So we got Frank Champion Frank's and back? Shea. Frank Champion uh, has was been. He back at the he, RWA show? Yes, he was. He was he's been. He's been off and on wow. back for a couple of places. Yep. Like he did an NCW taping. Okay. Where he teamed up with Shay, and uh, and then of course he teamed up last night. Well, it was two nights ago now for me uh, at RWA's Return of the Renegades. I'm sure that'll be on YouTube at some time in the near nice. future. I'm sure T will confirm that for me as soon as this airs. Right. But um, but that that'll go up. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's if for anybody who has missed Frank Champion, yes. he is uh, he's back on a limited basis. Is the best way to put it. I, that I, is awesome. So They're so a great team. We got a hell of a we got a hell of a field for our tag team tournament. Uh, we wanted a couple of other we wanted some team other teams along the way, but you know scheduling, right, and, right, know, how that course. goes. So, but we got an incredible uh, we got an incredible field of tag teams, and uh, I'm very happy with how everything has turned out so far. Nice. So, um, so yeah, so th that's that's uh, that's what's going on with that, and plus on the uh, you know we've got Corinne Mink against Wild Man Congo. Yeah, and. I and a hoss match. You want to talk about? You want to talk about a fight? Um, I, I can tell you because it's probably already aired at this point. <laughs> and I mean, it's already been in the can for a while, so I'm not I'm not telling any tales out of school. Right. But it's one you want to go out of your way to see. Nice. Now, can I ask something on? Um, now, Ricky Medeiros is taking on Mike Montero. They just did on your last show. Ricky Medeiros. Um, I know they're teaming up in the tournament. We just recently completed what we refer to as the Dragon Trilogy. Originally, yes. it was going to be... Because we like to go off video game stuff. Right. Ultimate Alliance is a Marvel video game, for example. Please don't sue us. And, you know, we were originally going to do a taping with NCW. Because they were doing tapings. Right. And we were going to, like, split them with them like we did with the Max. And it was, it was a two-day thing. So we were going to call it the Double Dragon. Okay. Because the video yeah. game Double Dragon. And then um, I decided that, you know what, we're not going to do that. I don't want to complicate what JC is doing because I know how these taping. I asked him, I said, how many tapings have you done like this before? And he's like, this will be the first one. And I'm like, I am not going to right. run matches on your taping because you and he and I'm sure if you ask him, he'll admit it. Work in progress. Right. Uh, we finally, we, I, I would like to believe that we definitely got it down to a better science as time went on. But as someone, I had been doing TV tapings forever because, right. to be frank, when I was doing my other projects, that's the best I thought we'd ever do. I never thought we'd be doing live shows. Right. Fast forward to now and, <laughs> hey, you know, Damn straight. <laughs> three to one. Anyway, <laughs> um, so... You know, he got it down to a science by the last taping, but you could tell JC this is not his wheelhouse. It's not what he wanted to do. Right. Uh, but you know what? It was successful because he created this 45 minute to an hour long weekly show with eye pay per views. And in doing the process, he learned that, oh, you can make money 
right <laughs> yeah in other ways so you know it was a great learning experience but anyway we were supposed to do this double taping with them we were going to do a show on each day and a show right. of like five matches you know right. nothing crazy and we were going to release it as one thing and call it the double dragon that was the idea and then uh when we decided to cancel that um I decided that it was like, you know what? Uh, I always, I did a, sh you know, I always liked the, the old martial arts movies, like the Bruce Lee movies, right. and like, so I was like, Enter the Dragon. I, I always, I did a, I did a taping called Enter the Dragon for a couple of projects ago, and I just loved the name. It's like obviously it's lifted, you know what I mean? Right, right. right. But it's just like, all right, cool. So it we, is a great name. We did a show called Enter the Dragon. Yeah. And then I said, well, if we were gonna do the whole double dragon thing, like, what the hell? Why don't we just go with it? So. One of my favorite video games growing up, and this is a real deep cut for anybody who's a video game fan watching this. I was a video game fan around the time um, the Sega CD came out. And the Sega CD is one of those systems that does not get its due. Right. It, some, there was something dangerous about playing the Sega yeah. CD because it was the first. It was like one of the first ones that uh, one of the first systems that you could like. They had video and whatnot. Right. It's like that pretty girl might take her clothes off. <laughs> You know, it was because, you know, all young adolescent yeah, yeah. boys and it's just like, like a pretty girls in a bikini, maybe. <laughs> what game was this rated? Oh, wait, we don't have a rating system yet. Now, was that a handheld? No, 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 no. It was um, it was literally an abomination. <laughs> uh, you literally had to take your Sega Genesis yeah. and screw stuff into it and plug it into this thing. And it had its own power adapter. So you had two giant brick things. And then later on, they would they would. They would create this other thing called the 32X that would stick right into the slot. This thing was getting it from every slot it had. And, uh, you know, if I could do that, yeah. I'd be in porno movies. Yeah. So, anyway, the Sega CD, don't laugh. Don't I laugh. Can't it's not good. It, it's not good I for editing. Help it. So, the Sega oh. CD was like this add on. And I went all this way just to go. So, there was a game on the Sega CD called Rise of the Dragon. <laughs> and it was one of my favorites growing up. So, I. I called the second show Rise of the Dragon, and then um, we were like, okay, well, what are we going to call the third one? Because we're going to do a trilogy. Right. That was the idea, and it was, uh, you know, I think it was like the, um, we ended up going with the last dragon, show enough, because um, who's the master? But no, we went with the last dragon, but there was a couple of different ones, like the right. tail of the dragon, which would have been like a play on words because it was yeah. the end of the series. But like, you know, it was like we we went with the last dragon. So we had these three shows and we if you watch those three shows like back to back to back and we released them close enough apart that you kind of could, you right. know what I mean? But like if you watched if you like took if you took a day and or if you took 6 hours and watched those shows back to back, there is an overarching story that plays out over the course of the three shows. So it's not just a trilogy in name. Right. It was one in story and Enter the Dragon, we all know that the uh, the DCMC are a very tight group of guys that grew right. up together, Jason Devine, Ricky Medeiros, and Mike Montero. But we were telling a story before the pandemic that Mike was disappointed in Ricky. Ricky had never won a match with PG. Not a single one. Had okay. been with us for two years by the wow. time the pandemic hit, didn't win any match, was on almost every show. Right. You know, didn't mean he wasn't putting in good performances. Right. Just right. wasn't right. winning the matches. Yeah. And Mike got frustrated with it and because it all came to a head when there was a six-man tag and Ricky took the loss. Mm. And it cost Mike a win and that right. didn't make Mike happy. So Mike had basically started like chastising him and looking down upon him and all that stuff. By the time we get to Enter the Dragon, he's so disappointed with Ricky that he's making these demands that did right. not make Ricky happy. And Ricky blasted him in the face with the belt. <laughs> Unfortunately, for unfortunately for AJP at the time, the referee decided to call a DQ on that, uh, so he didn't. He was this close. Right. Um, we're going to rectify that August twenty first when we put Ricky and Mike. Uh, sorry, when we put AJP and Mike in the ring again for the belt. So, nice. so you know, naturally, Ricky uh, put his hands on his buddy, and Mike didn't like it, and Mike demanded that I give Ricky, a guy who's never won a match, right. a shot at the championship, and damn, wouldn't you know it. Ricky Medeiros beat him for the championship. Nice. Now his now his name is permanently on that belt forever, yeah. right next to Mike's. And That's you know Mike awesome. ain't gonna forget it. Right. Mike would go on to win it back at the last dragon, but you know, it's one of those things where it's just like the Red Sox. How many years was it? How long was the curse? Oh God. 86 years. 86 years. Red Sox. 
couldn't win anything for yep. 86 years, the yep. so-called curse of the Bambino. Yep. If they had only won that World Series that snapped the streak and then never won another game, yeah. you still couldn't take it from them. Right. Exactly. And that's what's important to remember. Right. You know, a lot of people grow up watching wrestling and they're like, Ric Flair's a 16-time champion. It's like, yeah, he lost it 16 times. Exactly. You know, but here's the thing. He had it 16 times. Exactly. You know, so it's like, it's like okay, right. he was the top of the hill 16 times. That's right. So Ricky, a guy with zero wins over the course of two or three years, finds himself with the opportunity of a lifetime, absolutely takes it, and nice. now you can't take it away from him. And that's right. what that, and, and, and like a lot of, some people criticize storytelling. Right. And I think no matter who you are, that's a good story. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So. It sounds like a great story. I'm, I wish I would have saw the match. Um, well, you can because it's live. Where are we on the three? I'm not on that one. I'm on this one. Here we go. It's live and free. No, it's not live anymore. It's free on YouTube. Proving Ground HT YouTube channel. Oh, and by the way, just shoot to the one. By the way, you like the shirt? Go to BigDaddyTees.com. There it is. There all right. You go. So, all right. I'm directing your show. That's okay. Yeah. Because it's just, you know, I've been tired at work all week. Talking, yeah. Man. I've been stripping floors by myself and stuff. But listen, we got a few fan questions. I'd like to... Uh, I doubt these people could be considered fans of mine. Oh, I think they are. All I right. think that they actually might even be more than fans. I think they're your friends. Ah, well, I we'll think see. a couple of them might be your friends. All right. From Andrew, oh God, Augusta Vich. Is that right? Mm. You don't know Andrew. I, right. I've never met him in person. Okay. I know he likes the, sh the show, though. All right. How does how does one go about getting their foot in the door to train and be part of the proving ground roster? Now, I think he kind of answered that in his question. Mm -hmm. Well, there's well, there's you know, there's two directions on that question. So it's like. Where do I get my foot in the door to train to become a member of the Proving Ground roster? Now, despite what some people might say, I prefer you go to wrestling school. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I realize there have been some really special cases yeah. in the past. But uh, but in this particular case, I would definitely recommend uh, doing some research. Uh, I don't know where you live exactly. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this fellow was connected to APW, okay, which no longer has a school. No, I, not but at I, the moment. But I do know that Buddy, Bu yeah, yeah, Buddy opened one up in Manchester. Yeah. So if you're in the New Hampshire area, I'd recommend Next Gen Wrestling. Yes. Uh, if you're, you know, or you could look into, you know, once again, depending on where you're at, I like, uh, I definitely like um, the Lockup. Yep. Ryan Drew. Ryan Drew. I like uh, New England Pro Wrestling Academy. Yep. Chase Del Monte. Big Scott. Yep. A lot of stars coming out of there. A yes. uh, lot of talent I've been able to actually work with from there in the last uh, several months, thanks to the, the taping era. Because, right, you know, right. ev everybody, they want to get, you know, they want to get their work in. Not a lot of places were running. So a lot right. of places had a chance to get some talents that maybe they wouldn't have had. Did you get a, did, did uh, Cashew work for you? Yes. Yeah, man, that yes. kid's good. Yeah, I worked as a cowboy. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cowboy him and, cash. Him and, uh, him and Ricky Archer or Ricky Smokes Ricky now. Smokes. Uh, Ricky Smokes and Chaz <laughs> Drinks was my gag for a while. Well, that was my roommate's gag, and right. I just stole it from him now. But uh, no, we had, um, I believe he's now going by Brad Cashew. Okay. Yes. So yeah, we had, um, we had Cashew and Smokes, Archer, however you know him. Right. We had uh, we had them in for uh, Rise of the Dragon, uh, along with uh, Love Doug, nice, and uh, Billy Wenker, who's also a who. I mean, a lot of people call him Billy Wanker because he plays a British character, but okay. it's Wenker, W E N N K E R. Wait, it doesn't matter. The long and short of it is, is we had a handful of people from New England Pro Wrestling Academy, and those guys. I was expecting to get Cashew and Archer. Right. They showed up, and they were just like, you know, we got these belt buckles and this hat. I think we could try out this cowboy thing today. So they become <laughs> Sheriff Chucky Chestnut and Deputy Dale. <laughs> no last name, just Deputy Dale. And you want to talk about if this wasn't a rib, it was great character work. Yeah. And you want to talk about them, them taught like that's the thing. They do something that I really love that not enough people do, and that's they talk during the matches. You know, like, all right, so one of the biggest critiques I'll give a lot of people is sometimes you need to really, like, you want to get the audience into it. Right. And when I was a kid, 
it always felt like, you know, up in the up in the nosebleeds. No, Tito. That was always my dad's favorite joke. Uh, cause we saw a show Tito Santana was wrestling uh the repo man, I think. And he, he was, was about to bought him off. And yet. he was about <laughs> and he was about to get jumped, and I'm like like borderline crying, screaming. I was like 20 at the time. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no you were no, not. Uh, it must have been seven. You're on or eight. a roll today, Steve Bott. Let me tell you something. Let me get my arrow hat. Anyway, um, so you know, we so I would always, you know, I would always be like, I loved the local shows because if you were sitting close enough and you were screaming loud enough, right. someone would lean over the ropes and they would address you. That's why um, usually when I come on the show, I get wicked emotional about something, but I'm not going to despite what we're talking about. So the night I, the night I called it a night, yes. um, one of the big things that I did, I refer to that like promo or speech or whatever you want to call it, is probably the most important thing I ever did in wrestling, to me anyway, because right. anybody, anybody can be a fat guy that does a backflip, okay? I, I, I got away with getting bookings for that for right. several years. But there was a moment in it where I started like telling, you know, I started talking about like, you know, whatever you dream about. Yep. Whatever you dream about, don't give up. And I made sure to address these kids. And I may have even told this on this show before, but I think just, you did. Just but a it's quick okay. run it's through. A great, yeah. And there's a point where I'm just like, you know, all the kids like you, and I'm pointing these kids out because I knew how much that would have meant to me right. when I was yeah. a kid going to wrestling shows. And then, and then, and then what was funny was, is I got specific on two sides of the ring, and then I got to the other side, I got to like the third side of the ring, and I realized there's a lot of kids over here. It's like, everybody on this side, you know, to yeah. generalize. Right. And one kid piped up, and it's just like, like you, like you, like all of you, and one kid goes, like me. And you want to talk about pulling on my heart. Right. So I made it a point that I walked over to the ropes, I looked him dead in the eye, yeah. and I said, just like you. That's awesome. And those are the cool, like those are the cool little moments that you can't get back. That kid, yeah. like, see, look, I remember Stevie Richards wrestling in my high school when I was a kid. I remember seeing Kurt Angle's first match, right. which was also in my high school. Yeah. I remember meeting Killer Kowalski before I went to Chaotic to train with him for a, a cup of coffee. You know, but like. It's like, I remember all these little things from the indie shows I went right. to because it made such a big, it was a, right. such a big deal to me. So I'm hoping that the generation of kids that are coming out to these indie shows, the Limitlesses, the Chaotics, the NCWs, the PGs, the RWAs, every yeah. place in between, the WAWs when they were yeah. having crowds in, every, from every Lucky level. Lucky Pro Wrestling. Lucky Pro. Every Look, we could sit here all day and oh, talk yeah. about the promotions in New England. There's so many of them. There are so many. <laughs> there are uh, beyond. Yep, beyond. APW. Yep. Every, don't get mad at me if I've, you know yeah. what, Nick? WTF. Okay, so yeah. watch this fight. Don't get... Yeah, funny hey, yeah, people watching. Yeah. I, I I only say that because there was one night we all did this like promotion together show, right. and in the closing moments of the show, I completely forgot to mention it. So Nick, that's for you. But nice. so like with every promotion in between, and believe it or not, I have worked yep. on every yeah, one of have. those different levels in some form or fashion. And I got to tell you, the wrestling, the fans. We can all say that we're doing this different thing. And, right. and, and you know what? It, I don't want to get negative. I, in the last nine months of my life, I've tried to remove a lot of negativity. That's good. I don't respond to people being negative anymore. Yeah. Or, That's you good. Know, I just, I, you know, okay, great, cool. Move on with my life. I got stuff. Right. My life is dope and I got dope things to do. No, um, but like, I don't want to get to the negative, but I still know that there is still that fracture between us. Right. You know, there are people here, 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 and here yep. that'll crap all over here. There are people down here that because they resent all that crap all the way up here. Yep. And it's just like everybody has this feeling of I'm better than. Right. And in some cases, yes. In some cases, no. Right. And it, But here's the thing. At the end of the day, the fans don't care. Right. The fans will pay. Look. You they're know, gonna like who they like. They're gonna like who they like. They're gonna follow who they like. Yes, they're gonna right. like. You know what? <clears throat> you want to know why you look better this month? Well, you happen to be running in my hometown. You know, yep. so it's like you're a lot easier to get to than the E. Right. You know. Yep. Like the people who love one promotion may also love another promotion, but they only buy tickets to this one. Why? Because it's not an hour drive. Right. Some people, and I've noticed this. I'm, I'm like that, Todd. I'll be hey, honest. Hey, I'm lazy I'd, when it comes I'd to sell that. you a ticket to my show, you know? but I know you ain't driving an hour it's, and a half to that, see that. That's the so, thing. I, and you know something, though? I really am making an, an effort to get to everybody's show this year. I've actually went to a show that took me two hours. I actually drove a place with Damon 
for 14 hours to go to a wrestling convention. So I think an hour and a half ride from now on is going to be nothing. Well, so good. You'll see. So I, I got tickets in my pocket, Leo. Buy one. No. Uh, but what I'm, what I'm trying to say is this. It don't matter to the fans. Right. And the loudest 10% of the fan base that makes you believe that it is. Right. Those people don't buy tickets. <laughs> the noisy the noisy few are the ones who won't spend a dime on it, right. but will make you change what you're doing for it. So, so I guess, like I said, the, the wrap up on that is we're all doing the same thing at one level or another or one right. form of or another. And the fans, as long as they're happy, I don't care. Do it's I? It's a good way to good way to be as a promoter. Do I think limitless? Do I? Hey, do I think limitless is an amazing promotion? Yes, I do. Good. Do I think Beyond Wrestling is a, is an amazing promotion? Yes, I do. Do I think that Chaotic is an amazing promotion? Yes, I do. Right. Okay. Do I think the people at all these places are amazing? You know what? Despite. What you might hear, yes, I do. Nice. Because everybody is talented in their own way. That's right. And there's no reason. Like I said, I went to WAW. No offense to them. I've yep. said this to them directly. Right. No offense to anybody watching. I've went to WAW, which is considered the bottom. Right. I have found some, I have found some diamonds in the rough. You sure have, and you've made a lot of friends there. I've made a lot of friends so, I mean, there. I have, you can't knock that. If you're, if you're friends with people and you, you go, you enjoy it, you enjoy it. I have, I, I have friends everywhere. I want everyone to right. succeed. I don't care if you don't believe me. No, I that's definitely it. believe you. So that's it. Um, but anyway, they were cowboys. Right. <laughs> I just can't see it. So, yes, well, you can. Watched yes, it. you no, can. Yes, I will Un see him. I oh, know that. Okay, I yeah. will see him. All I'm saying is, though, after watching them wrestle, you know, all the other times when I've seen them, just to see them with cowboy hats on, I actually can't wait to watch this because I can't wait. And to my detractors, I didn't cry during any of that. Nice. So, well, you brought it up. I know you said you went and worked with Limitless. Yes. Which as, right as, now is one of the best promotions in the whole United States. If you ask Anthony Green. He got me the booking. Nice. That's good. I remember he was telling, uh, he was telling uh, Evie and Davey, and he's like, I got him the booking. They didn't care. Right. We were eating Burger King at two o'clock in the morning. They didn't care. <laughs> but no, I got to, uh, I got to work. I finally got to work for Limitless. I got to nice. work under Randy and, uh, and I got a chance to meet Harry Aaron, who, nice. you know, I'm a big fan of his pictures. Yeah, and, me too. You know, I guess if I'm not mistaken, based on the conversation that we had, he drove from Florida. Wow. To Maine. Yes, he did. He moved a while ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm. Pr I, you know what? I'm not even going to say pretty sure. I have no idea. I'm no, but, but I, I, I think am pretty he, sure he moved. He drew, not, wasn't that long ago. No, I'm, I'm saying no, it wasn't that long I think it might have been around the same time, if not in the vicinity of when AG got signed. Right. But I don't think those two things are. Right, right. Yeah. But he was, uh, he was, he has a lot of, he has a lot of interesting philosophy. And he's a very interesting guy to talk to. Uh, he has a he had a he had a very interesting. I won't get into it because it's not my my, right, my passion right. conversation. But it's like he uh, he had a really interesting idea about the return of the territory system. So if you can ever get him on this or oh, yeah. something, or right, if right, some right. podcast does, yeah, it'd be interesting to ask him about that just to see. You know, do you agree? Do you not agree? Right. Who cares? Yeah, you know, just let's listen to right. the conversation a bit. Now, was this AG's first appearance back at Limitless? Yes. Yes. So they, I saw the video. They teased it. I they, saw the video. Yeah. And I literally, I teared up when I seen him stop himself. Yeah. You could see him. He came out and he went, you could see it in his face. And he was trying. He just was like, whoo, took his, a deep breath. His man. mustache started sweating. It was under the pressure. I could see it in him. Um, oh, it's so amazing. He, yeah. It was, it, you know, and I'm not, and I don't want to be one of those guys like, oh man, you had to be there, man. But seriously, yeah, you had to be there. Yep. And it's just like, and you know, it makes, and, and selfishly, um, I didn't have a whole lot to do that night. You know what I mean? Right. I was, and, and I'm not taking credit away from anybody who's just on the tech team. My particular job was I was basically to watch the wide shot. Right. Just to make sure it wasn't, you know, going out of focus or if something spilled out on the floor, follow it right. if they're in the front right. side of the ring and whatnot. So it was like, to me, it, I realized that I, you know, I've been doing a lot of things for so long that I right. take it for granted. So, you know, but anyway, you know, that was my job for the night. I basically got to watch the show. 
That's pretty cool. Which is what it was. Yeah. And uh, and when AG came out and that place erupted, you got to remember they the 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 show before that they teased it and they sent out Brett and Channing Thomas, uh, and um, oh god, his name escapes me, but John Alba's crew of guys. Uh, they sent them out. The Prestige. The Prestige, yes. Oh, and I know the other guy's name, too. Mac Daniels. Mac. Yes, Mac. I call him More Armpit Daniels because every promo shot he's got, he's like, let me show yeah. you my let me show you my bicep. Also, <laughs> let me show you my shaved armpit right here. <laughs> you know, which, you know, I'm not I'm not downing him right, for right, that. Right. I just, it's just like, it's just the first thing I'm like, all right, can we get 30% less armpit in the next promo shot? And he'd be like, nah, 40% more, baby. Here we go. <laughs> Everybody was cool, and I love I love CT and I love BRG. So yes. uh, so they came out the show prior to his music, which was a great setup right. to remind everybody that was his song. Right. So when it happened again, they expected them. They expected. Uh, well, half the audience stood up, and the other half was like, "We've been we ain't gonna get fooled again." Right. Um, but the fact, the thing that I thought, and this is, I don't know if Randy came up with this. But it was brilliant, and it was a genius move. The show was called Undeniable, yeah. right? If you've been following along with what yep. AG's been doing, he's been using that word. So yes. it's just like if you, like, it's I'm just I'm just like creativity gives me goosebumps. I'm just right? thinking about it. But like he was like they, they they snuck that one past me, and I'll watch anything AG does. Yeah. I think if I'm not mistaken, and I. I could be ruining it by talking about it right now, but I'm trying to get him to agree to a figure. Um, so let's hope, and I'm trying to get him on to a Proving Ground show before we finish up, for, before he get, goes and gets signed somewhere right. where but, he can't. Before we go to the other questions, we I got to talk to you about this. I don't get it, Todd, why like they released them. I, you know what I mean? I don't understand why they released The Fiend. Some of the guys I get, I get some of the releases, right? Probably more than half I get. Bronson Reed, you just had him as the North American champion. He was just doing dark matches, getting ready to make one of the main rosters. Like, I don't get it, dude. I think there's something broken in the WWE right now. Do you want a hint? Yeah, I'd love it, please. Now the, now the people at home aren't going to get this. Look around. What color you see, Leo? Uh... Well, you tell me what you see. I see green, Leo. Is it green screen around oh here? Oh my God! Wait, I'm it's not like on windows. This here we go. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so green. It's yeah. money, right? So now, is that to say that it's all about money? You know, everybody's got a theory, right? And you, every time I come on here, I tell you I don't watch, right? And, but that's also part of the problem, you know. Like some of yeah. those lifers just stopped watching. Right now, that's not the reason. I I honestly believe I've heard a lot of theories, and I believe in the WWE sale theory. To be to be frank, I think that's what I think too. That's I think what I've been saying. I think they're lowering. You know, I think they're lowering costs. I mean, they just put out the report about um, wanting NXT to be less, you know, less older, smaller talent, and more box office. Right. So it's like they let go of Bobby Fish. Aren't they gonna like I was thinking this sell SmackDown Raw and obviously the pay-per-views, but keep NXT. Yeah, do you but think they'll do that. But here's the thing, you know, just because just because uh Triple H treats it like his baby doesn't mean it's not the bastard stepchild True. to the oh. man upstairs. Oh, absolutely. It obviously is. You know, it clearly is. <laughs> it it's, clearly it's, is, it's, man. You know, of all the things that WWE... Now, I will admit, like, you know, I think they're finally doing it right with who they have on top. Right. Like, they brought Bobby Lashley back, and it looked like they were going to waste him right away, especially, yeah. with, like, the momentum that he was getting from Bellator and working with TNA, which I know means nothing. In a lot of it's ways. where he got really, he started getting really good there. But that's the thing. He got to TNA and he started doing amazingly. Yeah. And you got to see the real Bobby. The Bobby the Bobby Lashley that they wanted calling Finley a bastard so many right. years ago. You know, he was fine. He finally grew into being Bobby Lashley. Right. So the fact that he's on top works and the fact that Heel Roman is on top works. And it's like, okay, they finally got it to where it works. Right. And when they got rid of ag i mean all of us were crushed and you know um but it was just like okay so it, at the very least they're getting rid of 205 right right because you know it was once, he was on every week i know he was the show yeah 
I mean, I can say that no. because we know him. No, but there, yeah, there was know. other guys, too, that were you know. prominently featured, too, that were good. But like yeah, I, he definitely was one of the main characters. I enjoyed I enjoyed Kurt Stallion. Me, I too. I enjoyed uh, Tony Nese and yep. Arya Davari. But it was just like, if they weren't going to... With Arya Davari and Tony Nese, it was like, if they're not going to do anything with them right. by now, right. then they're not going to do anything. You know, they're like, okay, once they put the Cruiserweight Championship on Kushida, I'm just like, they're not going to waste Kushida on that show. Right. You know, so it's like he just took away yeah. the, the the part of the show that, you know, that made that show meaningful. Right. And so they they let AG go. And, I, and uh, to be frank, and you know damn well, it was of no fault of his own. Right. Oh, no they're, doubt. They're firing everybody. <laughs> no, I, it, it personally, let's say they don't sell. I guarantee he'll be back. And I'm not worried. Like to say, oh, he won't. Get, he'll be somewhere soon. Oh my! There's yeah. no doubt in my mind. He has got friends everywhere. He's got friends at Ring of Honor. He's got right. friends at AEW. Yeah. People that be like, hey, you could probably get this guy. And if I was AEW, I'd scoop him up now because I see nothing but a star in him. And granted, like you said, you know, we may be a little biased because he's from here. For sure. But we both aren't stupid, and we both know our wrestling, and we know a star when we see him. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, we, you know, know, we see, we know. Look at Casanova. Dude. You know. He's look, killing it. Carmelo Hayes. <clears throat> you know. Yes. Caramelo Hayes. <laughs> yeah. Dude, uh, he, but I mean, you know what I noticed right away, though, when he got signed by them and he was on TV? Even before that, he was posting pictures on Facebook yeah. and Instagram and Twitter. He put on like 20 pounds of muscle, oh, yeah. man. Guy's and always Matt been cut out of granite. Always, but th- but putting that twenty pounds on really opened some eyes. Oh, I think. for sure. And uh, you know, not once again, not to be super biased, but like a lot of people would dog Mike Montero. Right. Mike Montero, who I don't he's know, hell of a wrestler. I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, is one of my favorite wrestlers. Right. Um, so, but like Mike, Mike will always. Mike had always gotten the he's too small thing, right. and then during the pandemic, he put on like thirty pounds of straight nice. muscle. The guy's cutting himself up real good. It's good. So it's like, and and not only that, but it's not impeding his ability. Right. He is having some of the best matches that he has ever had, and right. we and we get to see it uh, for free on uh, on on the U- which one am I on, on the YouTube uh, Proving Ground HD? Check it out, uh, <laughs> salesman. Uh, nice. so, uh, but no, it's like, he's one of those guys that would get dogged for size and he actually takes the time That's good. to, he's been bulking up. And if I told him, I said, I will like to bother the bucks. Now I will drive you to Florida. Right. I do not care. Let's just make something happen. They're going to be in Boston soon enough. They sure are. Let's o- October. I think I, think I had October. front row tickets for that show Did you really? before they canceled it. So you still have? I think so. That's good. Good for you, man. You should have fun. Yeah, yeah. So the last (laughs) the last time I went to AEW when they were in Boston, I was on the wide shot every time they cut to it, and it was always like it was always like I I could because once again I'm directing your show. Uh, (laughs) I I I would always I would always know I knew which wide camera was on us because there were three of them. Job by it. No. All right. Good. No. No, God, but but man. Dick might Make offer it to, to me. Right, so I'm going to have to work harder now. Stop! Yeah. Jesus. No, I'm just teasing. Yes. But uh, no, it, it's great, though, what we're seeing from the local guys making it. Carmelo Hayes had a great match against Josh Briggs, another local guy in the uh, breakout tournament. Yep. And now he's taking on uh, Duke, Duke Hudson. I'm pretty sure his name's Duke Hudson. He's another big guy. He's like 6'5". Josh Briggs is like 6'7". Camelo's just going to keep taking him out and become the breakout champion of NXT. That's my prediction. I'm biased. And then everyone in the breakout tournament will be released as soon Most as it's like, over. I hope not, but, you Mike, know. Mike Montero said it the other day. He's like, NXT used to be you have to watch. Right. And now it's like, if you miss a week, everyone you like, that's gone. Yeah. You know, it's obviously, crazy. by the way, that's a joke. Right. And uh, in this day and age, you have to say, that's a joke. Right. I obviously don't want any of that to happen. Right. Uh, I want to see Christian Casanova wrestling for the WWE forever. I wanted to see AG wrestling for the WWE yep. forever. Oh, trust me, he's going to be somewhere. You know it, and I know it. And, it, and who knows? He'll be back there, too. Exactly. Sure. Oh, that's what I... If they don't sell, he'll be back in the WWE. There's no doubt. They like them. I don't... Again, it's got to be money-wise. I had heard a long time ago, Todd, I should tell people this, that one time I heard an interview with Vince McMahon, and he was like, I want the WWE to be in the same breath as Disney. As ESPN, HBO, and I'm sitting there like, just all these like things that are big in his head. 
You know what I mean? Maybe you didn't say HBO. I said HBO. God damn it. I we love need to HBO. be on the same level as Home and Garden. I like HBO. Yeah. I watch a lot of shows in that time. No, but really, um, don't you think? That he like he was saying that how- I'm sorry, I haven't been listening. What do I think? What? <laughs> what do you Yes, mean? of course he wants to be in that same conversation. But he's also a million. Right. Like, you know, what else do you need? Ah, it just pisses me off, man. You know, you like, know? you know, you know what? Hey, not my business. Right. Not my chair, not sitting in it. I so. don't complain about wrestling, but I get just as upset about things as the people that do complain about it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I'll always watch it. When I watch it, I, I watch it and di- like with disbelief. I want to be entertained. Like, um, for instance, you know, there's a show called uh, Resident Alien. I you saw it. Haven't it seen was, it. It was on sci-fi. I was watching it the other day. My girl was like, that is wicked stupid. I said, <laughs> why? She goes, well, because he's an alien coming down. Now he's a doctor. I'm like, listen. I do it like wrestling. I watch the show. I dispel belief. When I watch that show, that doc is an alien from another country, from another planet. You know, and I enjoy the show. Just like with wrestling. I go to a show. I dispel belief. Yeah, well, like, why? Look, I just saw The Suicide Squad just came out. It was a really good film. Right. And then, the, you know, and then you go looking for, like, trivia and facts and whatever afterwards. Yeah. And they're like, seven reasons why this movie is bad. And I'm like, I don't care. Right, right. You know what? I thought it was good. Here are seven reasons I thought it were good, and it's all negating your seven reasons. Right. Like, it was a screw I you and that everyone movie. that looks like you. So you said it's good? Oh, yeah, I thought I'm it was great. I'm definitely going to watch it. Idris so. Elba was great. Cena was great. I think the cast was really strong. Right. I was bummed we didn't get to see as much Pete Davidson. Uh, spoiler. But, uh, you know, but still, you know, it was, it was, a, lot of, it was nice. a lot of fun. And, of right. course, it was like, of course these people aren't superheroes. Exactly. They took the money, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, come yeah. on. But it's entertainment, man. Yeah, of course it Just is. Just like you're going to a rock concert. I'm going to be going to see my, my favorite band soon. September 21st, I'm going to see Tesla for like the 15th. Time. Ah, the okay. cars. All right. Like, no, not the car. Oh, Tesla. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Come on, man. Love songs. Yeah. Paradise. Getting better. They're just a great band. Well, I don't think you're, are you a Tesla fan? You don't look like you're Not a Tesla much, fan. but I do have a concert coming up August 18th in Newburyport. So, uh, stay. what is it? I, no, it's me. Oh, your I'm concert. playing. Oh, really? <laughs> My band. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, on the, on the, on the, on the Ultimate Alliance tour. So right. I did RWA this weekend. I'm doing your show. Yeah. I'm on Sally Jesse coming up. Nice. Uh, you know, we've got, We've got uh, Davey, Conan O'Brien. Davy Cash is running a show in Friday Fair night. Haven Friday night, right, or maybe tonight, depending on when you're watching. Yeah, yeah. Um, we still have two questions. Yes, and but that's all right. Finish what you're doing. Oh, I so got them. I got them. Here's here's an Anthony Green story for you, real quick. Beautiful. So I uh, once again ever the ever the faithful promoter. Um, I started doing a show on my YouTube called Proven Ground Pulls, which is, you know, I'm opening trading cards. Right. I loved doing that when I was a kid. And that's the, kind of the mood I bring to it. I'm just like, get your favorite bowl of cereal. Yep. Get your favorite cartoons. And we're going to go ahead and open some trading cards with your favorite fat guy nice. on Saturday morning. So that's what we did. We did it. I think we're, I think there's like a 10, 11 episode run total. And the first episode was I got those a box of those exclusive cards from UK that had AG's rookie card right. in it, and uh, you know it was a good show. And of course, I'd say that it's mine. But I I got the card and I was just like, oh, this is so awesome, you know, cool. And I'm like, maybe I can hit up my superstar friend and I could send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Florida yeah. and he can sign it and send it back. Finish recording it. Twenty minutes later, they let him go. Wow. Yeah. 15 minutes uh, 15 minutes after the recording I messaged him going hey I found your card would you sign it five minutes later I'm reading he's been released and I'm just like I am so sorry right <laughs> you know like whoops right do I have I think I think it might have been Atlee he's like you have no shame and I'm like none all right this next question is asked every time you come on the show mm-hmm. every time freight train I love you Matthew McGee, Derek Seminetti. I'm going to read it as he's going to say. Derek Seminetti. This is free training, Finally Matt. accepted the right. challenge after years of ducking me openly during a show. I officially retire October 23rd. When is he going to show up to fight Freight Train? Okay, so he wants a kayfabe answer. He wants an in-character answer. I'm not going to give him one. So here's, right. here's, here's, here's how this all started, okay? So in 2005, which is now... 16 years ago. Yes, 16 years ago. Yep. He was already too old then. And we, um, I met him in a backyard. Well, I'm sorry. I was backyard wrestling at the time. Yeah. 
and we were not in a backyard. We were in the woods area of a cemetery because none of us had a backyard we could wrestle in. And by the way, there's footage of all of this. Right. So one day I'm just gonna I'm gonna take this snippet of this show yeah. and just add it all in. That's awesome. So um, so I met I met Matt and um, right off the bat I could tell a he knew wrestling and b was the biggest liar I've ever seen. You know, yeah. <laughs> it was just in, in the nicest way possible because he was telling this crew okay. of guys like, oh yeah, it was doink. Ah, oh, why is he doing that? Or. Uh, or, you know, this and that. Basically, you know, basically making tall tale promises that you can't keep. Now he'll argue. My co ex co host used to do that all the time. Just did, so you know. Did he? Yeah. No, I'm drinking from his cup. Yeah, you are. But that's, I'd rather have you here than him. Mm. So, so, um, so anyway, uh, I get along with Matt. I always got along with Matt. Right. But it was nice one guy. Of the, but it was one of those things where it's just like, that's a nice story. Why don't you tell it again? You know, <laughs> like, uh, show me. I was, back then, I was, uh, pictures where it didn't happen. Right. In fact, yep. today I'm pictures or it didn't happen. Um, but in a matter of speaking. But so him and I, we became good friends. And it was he, we could definitely talk to each other because he's like, oh, you know, I'm a level headed guy. Right. And, you know, and some of the guys weren't. So um, there came a day where we were scheduled to have a match. And on that particular day, we were wrestling <laughs> in the woods area behind like a, a park. Anyway, the cops had shown up like four times right. throughout the day because there was like families, like houses over on this side. Yeah. And they were just like, there's this pack of ruffians and the screaming and because of you know, selling and fighting and blood and violence, et cetera, et cetera. So they kept calling the cops. Right. And me and Freight Train were supposed to go on last. And we had the, I was playing, I was playing an androgynous character at the time, which is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> and, and then, uh, so we, we worked this small little angle and we were literally making the entrance at the entrances for our match. And like a fleet of like eight cruisers showed up and nobody got arrested. It right. was just like, all right guys, it's time to pack it in. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, um, and then two shows later, I think I was out of the crew. Wow. And it's just because- Just that quick, huh? Well, yeah, I didn't get, a, like the crew was run by friends of mine, but right. we would have these moments where we wouldn't be too, you know, copacetic. Yep. Yep. So, so- I ended up out of the crew. We never got to do the match. Wow. And fast forward 15 years. Yeah. You know, he's running shows with Delilah out right. in Newton. And uh, I said, all right, let's do this. And this was like right after I was cleared from the neck surgery. I said, okay. you know, we're going to go have like a, a brawly brawl. Right. Who cares? Nothing, no, nothing that could super hurt my neck. Right. right. And just in case. And, uh, and then the pandemic happened. Yeah. And then he almost died. I didn't like know he that. had a medical issue, like it was bad. And Seriously. Uh, so and he's still asking for the fight. So I'll probably show up in Gloucester on uh on on a Saturday right. afternoon and go have a, a match to camera with him at some point. Because October 23rd, I'm running a show. So I, I'm not available. Right. Um and Buck's question about yeah. why can't Mike Montero why can't Mike, why can't Mike Montero win every main event? I feel like Mont Mike Montero should win every event. The only Dan Elwell. The only answer I have for you, Buck, is Mike Montero wins, LOL. It's been a pleasure to be on this show. We've got 16 seconds. Brother, it's always, always a pleasure. A, I, I always love having you on. You know Come that. out to the Ultimate Alliance August 21st in Peabody, Massachusetts at the Black Box. Yes. $25 general admission. And tonight, uh, Friday night, baby, Davey Cash's show. Yes. Peace. Hi, guys. I hope you're enjoying the show. Listen, I could use a little help to grow my YouTube channel. So if you could please like, share, and subscribe. That's most importantly, subscribe. Send me a direct message, and I'll give you a shout out here on the show. My YouTube channel is real simple. It's just my name, Leo Connors. Thanks in advance. Peace. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.